Okay, today I want to look at some of the things you want to do with your account when you first log in. So I'm here logged in as a test student that we've seen. So you can see I've got a bunch of courses that are uh, here in my dashboard. And you can sort of scroll down and see all of the ones that are listed here. And most of them are just test courses or sandboxes or sample courses and the reason for that is that this is what the faculty have been using as a way to learn all of the functionality for Canvas. So if I'm a student one of the first things I want to do is I want to come over here to the top left hand side of the screen and you'll see that there's an account button here and if I click on my account button you'll see it brings up my account with my name on it and right now my name is student001 and my username is AATest001. Now I can go in and change some of this information in here and this is something that I'd encourage you to do. So the first thing I want to do is click on the profile button. And by clicking on profile you can see that I have the ability to edit my profile. Um, I also have the ability if I scroll over that sort of gray outline of a person you'll see that there's a little pencil that pops up and if I were to click on that it allows me to upload a profile picture and one of the things I would encourage you to do is I would encourage you to uh, to upload a profile picture so that way your faculty and for that matter your fellow students can get to know you a little bit quicker because they'll see your image when you participate in various activities in Canvas. Um, so you don't need to hit the edit profile for that but if there's anything else that you wanted to do so if you wanted to add in links or if you wanted to add in a biography you can click on the edit profile button here on the right hand side but really the only thing I'd encourage you to do is to update your profile picture here. Uh, the rest of it is entirely up to you. So the second thing that I'm going to want to do is come over here into not quite the far left but this left hand menu here that begins notifications, profile, files and it's this fourth one here, settings, that I want you to click on next. So one of the things that you'll notice as you go through here is I've got my regular Coral email that's here. If there's an email address that you check more frequently than your Toro email and that's something you would like to receive Canvas notifications from at some point, you can add the plus email here. So if I click on over here on the right hand side, plus email address, I can add a secondary email address here. And if my Toro email is not one that I check frequently, if I often forget to check it, this is probably a good idea. The other thing that I would encourage you to do, since we, uh, the student email system that we use is a Google system, I'd encourage you to register your Google Drive. And you do that just by clicking on this link here under other services. And it'll ask you to provide your username and password for your Google Drive, uh, which should be the same thing as your Toro uh, password. And once you're done, it'll show up here on the registered services side. Now, the reason you want to do that is because Google is a virtual server, or at least your Google Drive is. So historically, if you wanted to submit an assignment using Google Drive, you would either have to download it as a Word file or some sort of word processing file and then upload it into Canvas, or you would share the link with the instructor. Now, if you download it as a word processing file, oftentimes the type of file that you download it as, the formatting often changes on you, uh, essentially ruining the presentation that you've put together in your program or in your particular document. If you share a link with the instructor, there's no assurance on the instructor's end that you aren't continuing to make changes in that document after the deadline. However, if you register your Google Drive here, when you're using Canvas, it actually, Canvas thinks of your Google Drive as essentially another hard drive on your computer. So what will actually happen is it will take a copy of the file from Google Drive when you were to submit it in the assignments area, 
and it will make a copy inside of Canvas for your instructor. So it would be the same thing as if you had used some word processing program and then uploaded that file into Canvas for the instructor. So that's something I would strongly encourage you do because it's something that is going to make things easier both for you and for your instructor. So to do that again, all you do is click on this Google Drive option here and then follow the prompts that you get. The last thing that I'm going to recommend that you do, over here under the uh, notifications profile files menu here again, the top one is notifications. So if you click on that one, you will see that whatever ways in which you've told the system that you can be notified, those are the ones that are going to be listed. So as you can see right now, it's just my Toro email address. If you added another email address, that's probably there as well. And right now you can see that there are a series of defaults that Canvas automatically uses. What I would encourage you to do is to go through and look at each of these to determine if they are things that you want to be notified about. You know, so by default, Canvas won't notify you if you have an impending due date. It just assumes that you know that you have an impending due date. Um, you can be notified about that. You can see your options across the top here. Uh, you can have you're notified right away. You can be notified in a daily summary that gets sent out sometime during the evening, or you can be sent a weekly summary where essentially all of the uh, changes or what have you for that particular thing uh, gets sent out at some point over the weekend, or the X here is do not send at all. So as you can see, the first one here, due date, has an X by, by default. The next one has a weekly summary by it, which is your grading policies. Um, you know, so some of these are ones that you want to go through and think about. Uh, a couple that I will specifically mention, um, make sure that your conversations, um, the added to conversation and conversation message, are both have check marks by them. Essentially that the internal mail system, so this thing that would be in my inbox over here, that is all inside of Canvas, and if you don't have these two things here checked, your instructor could send you a message in Canvas, and you might not know about it until the next time you log into Canvas. Whereas if you have these with a check mark by them here, you will automatically get sent notification to your email, your at tu.edu email, that you have a message that's been sent to you by such and such. So look through each of these particular ones and decide which ones you would like to be notified about and how frequent you would like those notifications to be. Um, in addition to the conversations, I might recommend that the announcements also make sure that you likely have a check mark by these. And by default, you probably do right now. But that's the other one that I would probably check because that's one that I think would be one that would be really important to you. Um, personally, from my perspective, if I was a student, I might also be interested in the grading one. Um, you know, essentially when grades are posted, I'd like to know about that right away. And if you're interested to know what each of these things are, so what does due date mean? If you scroll over it, you'll see that it'll tell you a little bit about it. So due date means that there's a change in the due date. Now, by default, Canvas is not going to notify you about a change in the due date. However, if I were a student, that's probably something that I would be interested in knowing, um, either at the end of the day or maybe exactly the minute that it happens. So, you know, scroll over each of these, see exactly what it's notifying you about, and then make a determination as to whether or not you want to be notified and how quickly or frequently you want to be notified about that. Um, the discussions are ones that I would probably recommend if you are going to be notified about them. If your instructor is using discussions as a part of the course, I wouldn't be notified right away because that means you would essentially get a message every time someone participated in the discussion area. Um, daily summaries are useful in that case, or even weekly summaries, and you'll notice that by default one of them is actually getting no notifications at all. So take a look at each of these and um, see which ones are useful to you. The only other thing that I would probably do 
If I was a student starting out right now, and this might not apply to everyone at the moment, but if you click on your courses link, you will see that I get a list of all of my courses here. At least it looks like all of them. There's a lot here, but at the very bottom as I scroll down, there's an all courses link. And if I click on all courses, you'll see that I get a list of all of the courses, but you'll notice that there's a couple that have actually a bunch that have stars by them. And one of the things that essentially happens in Canvas is any of the ones that have a star by it are going to show up in my dashboard. So as an example, you saw I just removed the stars from delete me, delete me two, delete me three, and delete this course. So now if I click on the dashboard, you'll see that those courses aren't there anymore now because if you remember they were all up here in front the only one that's still left that has delete me and it is delete me later here so you can see that there's a decreased number of courses that you have here so if there are instances where the instructor isn't using canvas or you've been enrolled in um, a course that is not like it's an internship course that isn't using Canvas at all or you know, you're into your second or third semester and you don't need the courses that are listed from the previous semesters there um, all you have to do is again click on courses scroll down to the bottom click on all courses and then you can put a star by the ones that you want to see on your dashboard and all of the other ones will hide away um, but you can still always get at them by going to all courses. So those are some of the things that I would do uh, as a student coming into using Canvas for the first time so that you can get it set up the way in which you would like to.